What's up people? I hope you're having a good day. So Sunday the 10th of October is World Mental Health Day and this is something that's really important to me and I think I've learned a lot about my own mental well-being in the last year. It's probably been the most mentally challenging year for me and I think through tough times you build resiliency and today I'm going to try and give some tips on what I found useful to get through the the tough times um, that I've been through this year and this is not meant to be a sob story on oh look at me and how hard I've had it I know there are people in far worse situations out there this is more so uh, trying to put some context into what I've been through this year and the tips that you can apply to your own life maybe you're going through a tough time or or have been and you know this these tips hopefully will help you th- help you as well but I'd gone from a, a banking job that I was I wasn't really fulfilled in at all left that at the end of uh, 2020 I then completed my personal training qualification sort of October November December 2020 so I came into the start of 2021 and we we're in lockdown in the UK uh, third lockdown you know it's pretty bleak in winter um, at the time I was um, in lockdown with my girlfriend at the time in London and January, February, yeah, it was it, it, it was quite a tough period for I think for all of us. Um, gyms are obviously not open. I, I was struggling a bit with motivation in terms of home workouts and um, just mentally quite quite a lot to deal with because um, I hadn't I didn't really know where to go with my business so um, where to, uh, luckily I had help from friends to set up a website um, but I didn't really have a clue on content creation in terms of I just started my YouTube channel in January this year uh, and, and uh, Instagram and you know the content back then was pretty ropey <laughs> um, I didn't really have a clue what I was doing I was sort of winging everything and it just feels a bit daunting you know when you first start something and you're looking too far ahead in yeah in in March and April uh, it, I was just going through a period um with my relationship where things were just not quite right and um, I was battling a lot of anxiety and and doubt over the future of my relationship because um, the doubts that hadn't been there before started to creep in. At the time I was was back with my family outside London, Milton Keynes, and I was thinking of getting back to London. And I think, yeah, I think at this point, um, everything seems so uncertain and, and anxiety is always gonna be highest when you have the most uncertainty in your life. Um, and then, yeah, in, in April, unfortunately, it didn't work out and uh, my girlfriend at the time broke up with me. Um, and to me, it did feel like out of the blue. So I, it was something that I didn't, couldn't control. And obviously, you go through the you go through this initial period of like disbelief and shock. Um, if anyone else has gone through a breakup before, uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And, you, you know, you're just in disbelief. And then... Um, you know how I got myself out of it I, I was in this hole in April where for like two weeks I just felt like what is the point in living like I, I was like I don't know where I'm going where my direction is you know I'm back with my parents I don't know where I'm going to be living um, I need to get back to London but I don't have a job to pay for rent um, you know I had savings but I, I just didn't I didn't see the direction I needed to I needed to get some steady income to then start renting again in London um, I was still trying to mentally process the breakup, which was very difficult. And I think basically after the first like two weeks um, of, so- you know, you start sulking about and then eventually it just clicks. And one day you're just like, why am I just sat around sulking, feeling sorry for myself? I can't control this decision. You know, you got to fo- you got to focus on what's in your in your control. Um, so the way I got myself out of this hole was basically just thinking, right, what can I control? I took a step back. And I thought, right, things I can control, hitting my step count. I looked at things like journaling, meditation, to try and keep in the present and uh, practice gratitude so that I could feel a bit more grateful for the position I was in, even though I I was going through a sort of tough time. Um, And that just gave me a good sense of perspective and that it wasn't as bad as I first seemed. Um, And I think just gradually over time, from like April and May onwards, um, I moved back to London, one of my friends, put me up in his flat which was really nice of him um, so I had a way to get back to see most of my friends in London and then through just ticking over these daily habits of hitting my 10k steps without fail like non-negotiable seven to eight hours sleep per day meditating for 10 minutes um, focusing on everything I could control so what could I control right I could do as many job applications as I had time to do so 
I channeled all my energy and my anger and frustration from the breakup into applying for jobs, doing job interviews in April and May, um, and just smashing the gym. Like All I could focus on was hitting my step count, job applications, and the gym, etc., and getting my nutrition in track, check. And I sort of channeled the breakup as a way to actually start taking action on what I'd said I would do in terms of losing weight. So, um, you know, I'd always wanted to get in better shape and to to lose some fat and uh, I think that acted as a trigger for me to be like right fuck this you know I need to get some self esteem and confidence back I'm just going to go ahead and actually get myself in a deficit and, and lose this fat so I started just ticking over the days you know some days you weren't really feeling it you know everyone has days like that um, but through these daily habits that add up over time in April, May, June I just continue gradually losing you know losing a bit of weight each week I could see the changes in the mirror and my physique improving and that acted as like a positive feedback loop for me to continue those behaviours. I then kept nailing my steps, 10k a day without minimum, if not 12, 15, um, journaling, meditating, um, reading before bed, getting an early night, limiting my alcohol intake, um, stopping caffeine in the afternoon, all these good habits I started doing and I just started compounding over time. And then by June, I'd um, luckily secured another day job. I then looked at securing a place to rent in London with a mate. So in in August, I was focusing my time on um, securing a place to live in London. So and and that's where I'm, I'm you know filming from now. Like I've I've we're now in October. I've moved into my my, my flat in London with a friend. I'm renting. Um, I've I'm th- sort of three months into my new job. The coaching's picked up as well. So I think just basically the the habits that I've I've been doing consistently over the last six months is basically what got me out of the hole that I was in, and it just really builds resiliency when you dig in and you just focus on what you can control. And I and I would always urge you to just basically reflect on on what is in your control and try not to waste energy on on worrying about things you can't control. Um, so you know th- in things that might seem insignificant day to day like hitting your step count like turning up to the gym like nailing your macros or your, ca- or your calories or your protein targets um, doing 10 minutes of mindfulness meditation etc um, getting an early night and focusing on your sleep surrounding yourself with friends and family good people reaching out to friends for help as well um, I also got some counselling support during this period, which I think has been really beneficial for reflection and uh, a bit of self awareness. You know, what areas, what areas can I improve in, and, and um, you know, focus on. And so I think all, ticking over all these positive habits is what's going to get you out of any bad situation. So um, yeah, so uh, you know, if I reflect on the last six months for me personally, I feel in a lot better place now than I was in in March, April when I was at my lowest point and I, I couldn't really see the way forward. So, um, you know, when when so many moving parts change at the same time, like your job, your um, your relationships, where you're living, etc., when all these things are moving parts at the same time, that is when anxiety or um, worries will come in most. So, um, it's definitely made me appreciate having a bit of stability now um compared to back then yeah so that that's basically what i've been going through this year and um and how i essentially got myself out of it and yeah i think by by essentially picking up these good habits focusing on what you can control and and just ticking over the days you know it won't seem significant each day there'll be some days where you just don't feel like doing your steps or you know if you you feel like eating shit or or you you don't want to go to the gym but I think it's important on those days to just drag yourself there um, and just take it over like a process keep trusting the process eventually you're going to get yourself out of that hole and things will start to fall in place and I think um, you know trying to remain positive even in, in these bad times is what's going to build resiliency and that's essentially what I've learned about myself in the last six months to a year action really is the killer of anxiety as they say like I, I really do believe that I think the more the more you focus on what you can do day to day rather than sitting around worrying about the future and and, and what you can't control is, is what's going to get you out of tough times so um, yeah that is my thoughts on sort of mental health yeah I know 
people have been through tougher situations than me but that is that's my personal experience this year and I'm grateful for the position I'm now in and yeah looking forward to the future and a more positive 2022 yeah feeling more positive for the future so um, onwards and upwards hope you're having a good day wherever you're watching this from and yeah always 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 look out for your mental well-being as well as your physical well-being and look to manage both and improve both over time and that's the biggest takeaway i can give you from from this hope you enjoyed my ramblings anyway um come i tried to keep this to like five to ten minutes but i think we've gone slightly over and yeah have a good rest of your day catch you in a bit